Well, hey, YouTube, welcome back, my friends, once again to Jack's Photo and Tech. Guys, if you're not subscribed, please click on that subscribe button. I would truly appreciate it. Today, we're going to be talking, I'm sure the title already gave it away, about using a layer mask. I'm going to be using a layer mask today to combine two photos. And to me, it's, it's the, there's good parts about each photo, and I'll tell you about that as we go through this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my first photograph. These are the two photos I'm using right here is uh, this picture of this log going across this water. So I'm going to just right click. I am in the organizer and I'm going to go to Photoshop Elements Editor. All right. It's going to open it up in my raw editor because I shot these in camera raw. But I'm just going to click open. Don't make any changes in here whatsoever. All right. There's the first photograph. And now we'll click on the second photograph. We're going to do the same thing. Oops. We're going to do the same thing. Open it up in the Elements Editor. All right, we'll just click Open once again. All right, now let me show you that what I feel is the best of these photos here. All right, this one, the background seems like it's, you know, really lit up nicely and it's not really blown out. But the foreground here, you know, seems a little darker. Now, if you look at the second one, the background seems like it's, you know, more blown out than the first photo. And down here in these logs, this seems like it's got, you know, really good exposure on the uh, the waterfall there with the logs. So again, if we go back, you'll see where it's really dark down here. And it's dark up in here. All right. So what I'm thinking of doing here is instead of having this overexposed, I want to have this bright water, but I want to take the exposure down this. And there's a lot of ways we can do this. But I wanted to show you how to use a layer mask and the power of the mask. I love layer masks. So the first thing we're going to do on this first photo here is we are going to duplicate that background image. You can use Control-J on your Windows computer or Command-J on your Mac. And then just shut that background layer off just for safe keepings. All right, let's hold on to that background layer. Now go back to the other photograph. And this photograph, we're going to do a control A and we're going to select the whole photo. Okay. Obviously on a Mac, that's command A. And we're going to copy that. So we'll do a control C on the Mac. It would be command C. Let's go back to the original picture here. All right, what we're going to do now though is we have to have some place to place that. If we just place it on here, it's not going to work well to copy it on top of another picture. So I like to create a new layer. Now remember layers, anything on top is going to cover up anything below, right? That's how layers work. Once we do that, we'll just simply hit Control V and we'll paste that picture. Now you can see that we have both these pictures. There's the original and there's the other picture. There's the uh, original on the top and the top. All right. Now that you have those, and you can even rename these if you wish. You can click on this. You can right click and you can say rename layer. And we'll say uh, photo two. Something like that. And you can use this one. We can rename this one. This really gets in handy when you are starting to use a lot of different layers. I found that I like to name my layers so I know what each layer does. So if I have a problem, I could just simply delete the layer and not have to worry about it. Let's go back to photo two. Make sure you're clicked on photo two. At the very top of your layer palette, there is a little thing. It looks like a frame. It's called a layer mask. Go ahead and click on layer mask. What we're going to do now is anything, once that layer mask is clicked on, anything we paint on there with, with black, anything below that will be exposed. If we paint on white, we can reveal uh, back to the original photo. All right. So we are on black. We're going to grab a paintbrush. And all you're going to do is start painting on top of the picture. But make sure you click on the layer mask. A lot of people miss this. Click on the layer mask and just start painting. What we're doing here is when we're doing this is we are revealing the image below it. Okay, we're just revealing the image below. Now, 
you're going to see, and I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, Jack, that didn't line up right. I was hand-holding my camera. These are two pictures of the same scene, but taken like just a second apart from each other. So you notice the tree in the background, how it looks like it's cut off here? What I would suggest to do is go with the tree that you're exposing and go all the way down it, okay? That will hide the front tree, and you're going to reveal the back tree, all right? There we go, just like so. All right. You're also going to notice on this tree over here, it's going to be the same kind of deal. So if we go over this tree, you can see where it moves a little bit to the right, but that's okay. We're just going to come down it very carefully down to the water. And you can see how it hid the front tree, but it revealed the picture in the back. Okay, same with these trees. And then all we're going to do is from the water up is what I want to reveal because I want, I felt that this first picture, the background was overexposed. So all I'm doing is I'm pulling a good background that I know that I have and I'm hiding the original background on the top. But I want to keep this stuff so it's well exposed there on the bottom. So all I'm going to do is go across right about there. I'm clicking right there. Watch the big circle moving on your screen. That's my mouse and that's my uh, paintbrush. All right, so I'm going to go down. Like I said, I'm going to come down to the water. Now, if you end up with a couple extra rocks, that's okay, because nobody looking at this picture was actually there with you. All right, we're going to come up here, come back across the other side of the stream on the other side of the water, and we're going to go right across the top there. All right. Make sure we have everything in it that we want exposed, exposed. And there you go. Now you can see that's a much more pleasant photograph because I was able to combine two pictures using a layer mask. Now let's see what happens if we uncheck that bottom photo. You can see now, basically it's almost like you're erasing it. And if you want to go in here, you can actually clean up some of the black that you still have because you can see that very easily. And then turn it back on. And there you go. You take that top one back off. That's the original photograph. And we'll turn it back on with our layer mask now in there. Now to save this, a lot of you and I get tons of emails that says, hey Jack, I don't know how to save this. Simply go up because you, if you want to save the layers, you're going to go down to save as. And pull this over here. You're going to save it as a PSD file. That's a Photoshop file that will save all the layers, save layers, right? So we can come back in here and maybe work on it again. It's going to include it in the Elements Organizer. Now, if you want to save this thing to take it to your local Walmart, your Kinko's or whatever, just change this. And you can change this to JPEG. What that's going to do is combine all those layers, put those together and save it as one file. And then we can take that file out and we can have that printed wherever we want to have that printed at. So folks, I hope you've enjoyed this quick tutorial here on using a layer mask. I find them to be very, very powerful, and I find that, you know, I use them a lot, and I hope that you uh, start using them also to do what I just did, reveal something that's, you know, put two pictures together, combining pictures by use of a layer mask. Super easy, super great at it. Folks, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you're not subscribed, please click on that subscribe button. I'd love to have you here. I've been doing Photoshop Elements tutorials probably since version 1. And now we're up to version 2023. So we are moving right along with all these versions. And remember to give it a big thumbs up. I do appreciate that. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching again. Remember, until next time, keep those shutters clicking. Keep your editors editing. And I'll see you back here next time on Jack's Photo and Tech. Bye for now, everybody. Have a great day.